and what's up guys it is nine o'clock a.m u.s pacific daylight time last week of daylight savings time here in america i heard the uk the once great britain fell back already we fall back on sunday did i put it in the folder oh yeah apparently not let me let me do it i thought that i i tried to put it in but it's I was having problems on both of my computers. So it's going to take a little bit to transfer. I'm just talking to Chris here. Guys, it is 2021 AD, Wednesday, November 3rd. And I want to talk a little bit about, you can well, be taking your calls. You can call in 888-775-3773. I'm going to touch on the election mess. I will touch on... Kyle, Jack Bauer, John Wick, Rittenhouse. They are just absolutely trashing and smearing the guy. And it's so unjust the way that they are treating him. It's so evil. And Richard Nixon. A little throwback for you guys. I don't know history, but I learned a little bit of history from the liberals and from some of you guys who are not liberals, to your credit. Richard Nixon. Did he call the press the enemy of the people? And did he change the name of the press to be called the media? Very interesting. It's preparing to copy still. It's not, it's not copying over. Um, Richard Nixon, he seems like he was an okay guy. And I was suspecting it because they universally smear that guy as corrupt. Oh, the first person he resigned. And he, what, he, I don't think he ever was impeached. He resigned rather than be impeached. But uh, he seemed like an okay guy, much more that, so than the people who are smearing him today and using him to smear Trump even worse. Well, they, they were using him a few years ago. But I want to touch on that and other things. Paid family leave, this nonsense. Don't fall for it. It's anti-family. But anyway, guys, let's get right on with... The show! One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the hey Report. The hey Report. La, la, la. Oh, it's the hey Report. The hey Report. La, la, la. Hey, guys! Oh, it's the hey Report. The hey Report. La, la, la. So, how are you guys doing? I am fine. And I want to talk briefly, if I can, about Kyle. Free Kyle. Jack Bauer, John Wick, Rittenhouse. It's ridiculous. I can't even connect to the, to the network. So we're going to go picture-free today, apparently. No pictures, no clips. No music? <laughs> I guess I can play the song that I didn't play yesterday. Psh, what a mess. Uh, just having some technical difficulties over here and uh, letting you know what's going on. Yeah, I don't know if you're able to do anything on your end, Nick. It's, I'm trying to transfer my folder into the Hake Report folder for today. from the, But it's a it's mess. It's a mess. But Kyle Rittenhouse... You don't have any pictures of him yawning, do you? (laughs) He yawned a few times during recent court appearances. Kyle Rittenhouse, once 17, now 18. Kyle Rittenhouse successfully defended himself from the, uh, from the attackers, Antifa Black Lives Matter attackers. Fellow whites, you might call them. Not normal whites, not Christians, not decent people, not just, not actual justice-minded people. People, they pose like they're for justice, but they're not for justice. They're evil people. I'm talking about Anthony Huber, an evil attacker of Kyle Rittenhouse who got himself shot and killed by Kyle. Kyle defended himself against him. And of course, was it Anthony Huber? And Rosenbaum, was it Jason Rosenbaum? I forget. 
Another scumbag, Rosenbaum, who's like, shoot me inward, shoot me inward. A dumb guy, foolhardy, acting black, honestly. And I say acting black because you may remember Ahmad Arbery. Ahmad Arbery went for another armed man's gun, and the armed man had to defend himself, forced to defend himself. A man who was trying to conduct a a peaceful uh, citizen's arrest. Maybe a little too ambitious? I don't know. Certainly got himself in trouble. But uh, this, this Rosenbaum guy, according to eyewitness things, accounts, uh, went for this guy's gun. According to Richard McGinnis, a, I think he's a Daily Caller reporter. He, I think I saw him on Fox News on Tucker Carlson's show. Said that he went for Kyle's gun. Kyle was there to defend himself in the community. And I think they got mad at him because he was carrying a fire extinguisher. He may have been the one who put out that dumpster fire that you saw a couple of days ago in that clip that I showed you. By the way, YouTube has censored two of my videos. There's a picture of him sort of yawning, by the way. He was in court. Oh, yeah, he's covering his mouth. Uh, Maybe he was up all night. Worried or something. 18-year-old young man. Defended himself successfully. What charges does Kyle Jack Bauer John Wick Rittenhouse face? Uh, First degree reckless homicide this guy is charged with. In the killing of that Rosenbaum. Joseph Rosenbaum, not Jason. Joseph Rosenbaum. The first man, quote-unquote. Whom Rittenhouse shot. And he was asking to be shot. Literally asking to be shot. Shoot me N-word. This guy said. Ridiculous. Reckless homicide. And that's this. Carry, and use of a dangerous weapon. This is what the prosecutors from Wisconsin or Kenosha, wherever they, they're from. State prosecutors probably. Scumbag liberals. Lawyers slash liars. Uh, lawyers can be boring. Maybe that's why he was, since based America first, that's why he was yawning. 60 year sentence, up to 60 years maximum sentence for reckless homicide, plus five years. Because I saw them, he's on his trial this week, Kyle Rittenhouse. Last year, he defended himself. It was clear self defense. But these people are not, don't have a mind toward justice. They have a mind toward lynch mob, mob so called justice, which is not justice. Social justice is not justice. 60 years plus 5 years extra for use of a dangerous weapon. Well, unlikely he would get 60 years even if he were convicted of this. He better not be. But who knows? There are many kangaroo courts. First degree recklessly endangering safety. Use of a dangerous weapon. 12 and a half years plus 5 years. 5 years for the dangerous weapon part. That's Richard McGinnis who I thought was a Daily Caller reporter. You, D- Richard McGinnis says... Oh, I was in the line of fire when he pointed the gun at Rosenbaum. But was Richard McGinnis hit? No, he was not. But that's called reckless endanger- recklessly endangering safety. Rosenbaum was the reckless one. It was quite clear. Chasing after Kyle? Give me a break. And then first degree intentional homicide. This is another charge. Trumped up charges in use of a dangerous weapon. Mandatory life sentence if he's convicted of first degree intentional homicide. And that's that Anthony Huber guy, the guy with the skateboard who came after Kyle Rittenhouse. I'm getting this from Fox News and the extreme left enemies of America, AP, Associated Press, on what charges he faces. Uh, Anthony Huber hit him with a skateboard and tried to go after his gun. It's on camera. You can plainly see it. And they still charged him? Give me a break. These people are evil. By people, I mean the scumbag lawyers slash liars. The prosecutors. Mandatory life sentence plus five years if, they're, if he's convicted. The guy who hit him with the skateboard and tried to take his gun. That's self-defense. Oh, he shot unarmed people. They're not unarmed. That doesn't mean it wasn't justified. It was justified. Anyway. Uh, attempted first degree intentional homicide. Use of a dangerous weapon. 60 years plus five years. That's that armed attacker Gage Grosskreutz. 
another self, plain self-defense thing. The Gage Grosskreutz was the other guy who got his arm shot and disfigured. I don't know, I forget where it was. Because he was carrying a pistol and trying to come at Kyle. Kyle defended himself. And that's attempted intentional, first-degree intentional homicide. First-degree recklessly endangering safety use of a weapon. That black guy who tried to jump kick him. I think it was a black guy. He got lucky. Kyle missed. He fired two shots. He missed. Didn't hit anybody else. No innocent victims here. No innocent victims. No collateral damage. That's why I call him Jack Bauer, John Wick. There were no innocent bystanders who were hurt. Kyle himself was maybe a little hurt. Possession of a dangerous weapon by a person under 18. It's a misdemeanor, nine months in, in jail, potentially. Wisconsin law prohibits minors from possessing firearms except for hunting. So stupid. If there's any time for a 17-year-old to carry a weapon, it's at a time when the, the powers that be will not enforce the law against BLM Antifa in uh, defending their community. So a 17-year-old doing something responsible, which is what Kyle was doing, he, there's no evidence he acted anything other than responsible that night and that day. He was seen, I think, earlier cleaning up graffiti or something in photographs over in Kenosha. He hung out in Kenosha a lot. I showed you a picture of him fighting and punching a, <laughs> punching a girl a week before or earlier. I don't know. I don't know when it was. Uh... That doesn't seem, that seems like a violation of your rights. I remember hearing a, hearing a, um, what was that? I remember hearing a story from JLP back when he was a kid. I think that he said the day he turned 15, he got a hunting rifle. And he went outside and shot a squirrel. 15 years old. The good old days when young men were responsible. Kyle, too, did not have his father, but he had a gun and he was obviously quite well trained. Quite well trained. Very nice. Uh, Here's a little bit of from the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel on August 26, 2020. Wisconsin open carry law. Did Rittenhouse legally have a gun in Kenosha? John Monroe is a lawyer who specializes in gun rights cases. He believes the exception for, is for, there's an exception for rifles and shotguns intended to allow people ages 16 to 17 to hunt could apply. It's intended to allow those younger, just barely minors, to go hunt. Hunting. Ridiculous. I hate anybody who says, oh, yeah, well, you can use your Second Amendment for hunting is a fine. Joe Biden says that stuff. Hunting. It's not what it's for. It's for attacks on America, like BLM Antifa was. Deadly attacks in many cases. Tom Grieve, a Milwaukee defense lawyer specializing in gun cases, agreed the exception may, might apply beyond hunting. Said part of the law is poorly drafted. You can say that again. If they're outlawing people under 18 from carrying a gun, that's a violation. Said he would, he would argue to apply a rule of law that interprets ambiguous criminal statutes in favor of the defendant. Nice. Rittenhouse could be in violation of having a, a gun in a, within a so-called gun-free zone. Yeah, like those protect people. Like if there was a school nearby or something. Gun-free zones. Another unconstitutional thing. Attacks on Americans. Illinois law requires anyone who owns any kind of firearm to, in that state to have a firearm owner's identification card. Uh, only available to someone 21 or older, though. Or a sponsored, someone who's sponsored by someone 21 or over. Rittenhouse did not own the gun, his lawyer said, though. And he did not cross state lines with it. I heard that it was given him by a, f- a friend, lent him by a friend. Did not carry the gun across state line. That's what Lynn Wood said. Remember Lynn Wood? Seemed like a capable lawyer. I don't know. Did he go off the deep end with that Trump and other stuff? Not that Trump went off the deep end, but Lynn Wood seemed to. I don't know. Gun never left the state of Wisconsin. According to, um, according to U.S. Code, militia is composed of all... Uh, this is U.S. Code. 
The militia of the United States consists of all able-bodied males at least 17 years of age, which Kyle was, and under 45 years of age who are citizens of the United States, and it says who are members of the National Guard, but the classes of the militia are the organized militia, which is the National Guard and naval militia, and the unorganized militia, which is what Kyle was. They were organized, but not organized by the United States government, which consists of members of the militia who are not members of the National Guard or naval militia. So, was the Wisconsin law violating his rights? I think so. It's a ridiculous thing. They may get him on that thing. Who knows what will happen? The New York Slimes I told you about, they said that Kyle Rittenhouse, they had an article called this last week, the 26th of October. Kyle Rittenhouse and the new era of political violence. Kyle Rittenhouse did not commit political violence. His attackers did, especially Rosenbaum, because Rosenbaum was angry, just blind with rage. Shoot me inward, because Kyle was there to stop, prevent the destruction of like a setting a, as I showed you earlier this week, and I got censored for it, I think. (laughs) Uh, Preventing a a gas station from getting lit on fire. Exploded. I saw some ridiculous... He did not commit political violence. His attackers did. Rosenbaum especially. And that guy with the escape... They're... I guess some of them didn't know what was happening. But if you don't know what's happening, you, you don't jump in and try to attack a guy with a gun. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. The vigilantes were the, his attackers. They were the vigilantes. Kyle Rittenhouse was an upstanding citizen there to help. There's scenes of him shouting, anyone need medical? Anyone need medical? Running, running up and down the street. Because he was there with medical equipment as well as a gun to defend himself and anybody who was, whose life was threatened or a great bodily harm. Right on to him for that. And that's his right. You have people who don't even believe in the Second Amendment in America saying he shouldn't have had a gun. People weren't comfortable with him having a gun there. Ridiculous. Shameful. Uh, there are some ridiculous tweets. You will recall attacking the free speech of the people who were, uh, who were defending his right to self-defense. You'll recall that Cassandra Fairbanks woman, she's like a journalist, activist, she was a former Bernie supporter, then she went for Trump, she started writing for the Gateway Pundit, and she got her, you will, you may recall, she got her tweets, she got suspended on Twitter for glorifying violence for saying Kyle Rittenhouse did nothing wrong. Everybody pretending Kyle Rittenhouse was wrong. It reminds me of the bandwagon against that so-called white uh, Catholic, Covington Catholic school boy who smirked with the racist smirk against, so-called racist smirk, against the American Indian guy. Oh, the whole media went after that guy, including Ben Shapiro. Pretending that he was so bad, standing in the way of the American Indian, Indian, American Indian, who was thumping his his, uh, drum in this guy's face. Nicholas Sandman, just universally taking the wrong side, just automatically assuming the upstanding white young man guilty, despite doing nothing wrong. There was another guy who got suspended, John Pierce, I think. Well, I don't know if he got suspended, but Lynn Wood, all all these other people. And meanwhile, remember that guy who got killed in Portland? Speaking of, and, and Twitter said, oh, you're glorifying political violence. You're glorifying violence. But all those people on those just leeches or lemmings or whatever you want to call them, just evil people, on Twitter celebrating when the Patriot Prayer guy got murdered in the street by an Antifa BLM male feminist guy over in Portland, Oregon. That f- a fascist got killed last night in Portland, I see, says... Some guy on Twitter. Republican fascists killed in Portland. They're celebrating. 
Last time I checked, this is what patriotism looked like. I seem to remember an entire generation of Americans who killed fascists and were called heroes. Talking about World War II when Americans went and fought the Nazis in, like, Normandy, supposedly. These guys supporting an innocent man, a religious man, getting killed. And this, to this day, they're up on, it's still up on Twitter. So much for to this day. not glorifying violence. A, right, a racist right-wing fascist was killed in Portland? That's crazy. Last year. Sickos, huh? Man, the computer is just f- frozen on the, on the finder. Let me see if I can re- refresh it one more time. What a mess. Maybe I'll quit this stack thing. It's ridiculous. Anyway. Yeah. Who knew? They hated, uh, they hated the My Pillow guy. Cortez, Alexandri Cortez. Let me see if I have this. The liberals were ridiculous. Cortez, April Ryan, CNN woman, I think, CNN White House correspondent, and this Xavier Pope, F, says Xavier Pope, who's a lawyer in Al Jazeera News, he's black, contributor, Al Jazeera News, scum of the earth, Qatari uh, anti-white propaganda, Xavier Pope, he wrote F Ricky Schroeder and that my pillow guy for bailing out Kyle Rittenhouse, this guy says. Arrest this mother, Kyle's mother, and if you're a supporter of any of it, forget you too, he said, F word. They are white supremacists, and it must be condemned unapologetically as strongly as possible. It's not okay. That's the tweet. April Ryan says, so actor Ricky Schroeder, Ricky Schroeder's an actor, right? And he supposedly contributed to Kyle Rittenhouse's bail fund because they arrested the guy for no reason. Charged him with these fake charges. This is November of 2020, and it's a year later, and he's in court for something that he's just doing nothing wrong. It's ridiculous. April Ryan, that black female fat woman, f- former White House correspondent, whatever, scum of the earth, Ricky Schroeder of Silver Spoons fame, and My Pillow CEO. That's that. I'm blanking on his name. My Pillow, C- Mike Lindell. Both put up money for Kyle Rittenhouse's bail after he allegedly murdered, says April Ryan. This is a reporter. A reporter saying allegedly murdered. It was not alleged that he'd murdered two people and injured another by who were protesting in support of Black Lives Matter. Both Rick Schroeder and Mike Lindell have been arrested for domestic violence, too, said this messy, evil, fat, black, April Ryan, CNN so-called reporter. Evil, huh? It's amazing how these people like Ricky Schroeder and Mike Lindell were proclaimed proclaim to be pro-life but turn around and bail out Kyle Rittenhouse who allegedly murdered two people advocating for black people by be, not being killed by cops. What a scumbag woman, huh? And she's allowed to be on CNN. Enemies of America. Enemies of the people. A true showcase in pure racism. Evil woman. And she's quote tweeting Yashar Ali who's a Huffington Post reporter who talked talked about the thing. Alexandria Cortez called it law and disorder. Yeah, okay, woman. Cortez is the, you know, she's a New York socialist, right? She said, she wrote, she wore a dress that said, tax the rich. Disgusting woman. She said, law and disorder is what it represents. People who argue about dramatic changes to policing, including budgetary ones, will mean violent people will be let out of jail to roam free. Rarely ever acknowledge that that's actually the current system we have today for the privileged. And she shows a picture of Kyle Rittenhouse. Oh yeah, real privileged. Being smeared by you scumbags and being falsely charged with murder, quote unquote. Does anyone believe Rittenhouse would be released if he were Muslim and did the same thing and in different context? For people who say systemic racism doesn't exist, this is what it looks like. Protection of white supremacy baked deep into our carceral systems. Incarceration, I guess. Law and disorder. No, that's what you are for. Utter disorder. What an evil person. 
ridiculous, huh? Yeah, and Kyle, t- Kyle did turn himself in. He tried. He sought to turn himself in that same night. He's like, "Hey, I just shot some. I just killed somebody." Alexander Sandy Cortez. It's ridiculous. Anyway, that's that for Kyle Rittenhouse. Uh, he was yawning in court. I can understand. And I don't. I don't really think. I hope he doesn't. There he is. <laughs> uh, son of a single mother. Man. Beat up that beat up that girl who was trying to get into a fight with other girls. Nice. What a mess. We'll see what happens with him. I, a lot of people, this there are sensible people who see through this mess. Which was not the case with the uh, Derek Chauvin trial. A lot of people felt, including somewhat s- people who seem like they're sensible, were siding against Derek Chauvin. So maybe Kyle will get a, some semblance of actual justice. Some semblance. Shout out to the Facebook crew, guys. I got to read some super chats. And I will get to your calls, 888-775-3773. I'm wearing my Get a Job t-shirt, one of them. You can get yours, teespring.com slash stores slash get a job. Taking care of business bear says, is AOC still seeing a therapist for fake allegations she was hiding in her office, about to be raped and killed on January 6th from the mostly peaceful Capitol protesters? It's a fair question. See if I can eject Studio 4 and reconnect to the network. Because I wanted to see if I could play that ridiculous person, evil person. Uh, the clown guy. You guys know who I'm talking about? It might transfer. It might transfer. We shall see. Oh, no. Big mistake. <laughs> Where was I? Oh, I wanted to do the Super Chats. Okay. See if I can do this. Man. Okay, let me see if I can pull it up from my phone. Technology, man. Boomer tech. This really is- this really stinks. Shouldn't have done that. Okay. Here we go. Super chat. Remember, guys, we were talking about the World Food Program. Let me just turn off my computer. Turn it on again. It's ridiculous. Yesterday, we were talking about the the UN, which are enemies of America. And there's this guy who is supposedly an American. American. He was a one-term governor. And just an utter phony. He has this southern accent, governor of, like, South Carolina or something like that. What's up? How far the South has fallen? And they've been under attack a long time, brainwashed against their own, probably, kind of like what happened to Germany. Germany is so messed up that they elected Angela Merkel, like, over and over and over again. Just a disgusting surrender of what's right. Well, similar in the South, there are the few, the proud. There are some great people coming from the South. Some of our best soldiers came from the South. Some best of our best Christians and voters come from the South. They call it the Bible Belt. They're, they don't fall for the madness. So that's why, to this day, they are smeared. It's disgusting. To this day! But there's these people who have these Southern accents who come on... There's utter snakes. Some of them even call into my show. But they, they become politicians. And they act like they have these charming accents. Which they do, but they're evil people on the inside. They're rotten. They're like whitewashed tombs. And there's this guy named David Beasley. 
who went on to work for the UN, the World Food Program. And I told you about him. I played a clip of him winning the Nobel Peace Prize with the World Food Program, which is a count against you, as I said yesterday. It's a count against you. If you get a Nobel Prize, Obama got a Nobel Prize. I rest my case. Not worth anything. It's actually worth less than nothing. It's a count against you. Well, he's all, oh, thank you for the Nobel Prize. We need more money. Just throw money at the problem of so-called world hunger. We have to give me more money so I don't have to decide who lives or dies. I don't have to ration the sharing of the wealth. What a commie, huh? Globalist commie. Just throwing money at it. Well, I got a super chat from... <laughs> What's up, Ali Dat A? He called them cle- creepy globosexuals, referring to the UN. Because the UN, I don't know if you're aware of this. Opening up my chat so I can see your chat again, guys. The UN have all kinds of mess that they've done. Their workers have done. They've looked the other way. They're corrupt. They're communists. They support the LGBT madness. And they... they, It came out that in one case, or one bunch of cases, kids as young as nine were, like, forced to do, like, sex acts for food. Sick, huh? But that's not even really the worst of it. The worst of it is the stuff they do legally right in our faces, pushing the LGBT madness and abortion... Sick, huh? Six billion to solve world hunger. Yeah, right, says Lindy. Yeah, exactly. Well, anyway, uh, yeah, you're right, Ali Dae. Nice to see you, man. Azador gave a super chat yesterday late. It was late for me. I didn't, I didn't see it in time. Said, the more we feed, the more they breed. The more they breed, the more they need. Because they don't take care of themselves. And then the do-gooders coming in and taking care of everybody, quote-unquote, hamstrings the people who are trying to take care of themselves and be independent. Did you know that? A bunch of phony do-gooders. It's ridiculous. See if I can connect to these things. What a mess. Well, I do know that I did give you the, the Colin Kaepernick thing in the Tuesday folder, so I could get to that if I... If worse comes to worse. But it is... Disheartening. Disheartening? Nah. I don't think that's the right word for it. Man. Uh, yeah, exactly. You throw more- you throw money at the problem, you're just corrupting it. You- you subsidize housing. Housing prices goes up. Did you know that? It's what happens. Ending world hunger is a bad idea and an evil plan, Asmodor says. Lofty goals of the greater good usually are, Ali Da'e says. We didn't have mass African migrations until we started feeding Africa. Now Nigeria and a few others are said to become tops in population for the next 20 years. Man. No, man, this is messed up. I can't do anything. I can't give you anything. Pfft. Man, what a mess. That's okay, we don't need it. But thank you for the Super Chat. Let me see if I can log into the, the other things to see. Check on today's Super Chats, guys. Where are all the starving people? Been watching vids on Central and Coastal Africa. Not there, says Radulazer. Interesting. Yeah, be incredulous. Be incredulous of the stuff that you hear. Man, it is hot in here. Can you turn on the AC? Taking care of business bear says that the Kyle Rittenhouse thing says you should walk on the homicide charges, meaning Kyle Rittenhouse. But, uh, the gun charge might stick. 
It, uh, if you want, Nick, I don't know if it'll, it's so, it's so confusing. If you want, if you can, if you want to figure that out, you can. But, nah. Another super chat from Peter from Periscope. When you play soccer, do you do whites versus the Mexicans? <laughs> I don't know if there's enough whites. Well, actually, actually, it is a lot of whites. Hmm. No, we don't really, we just pick teams when I did soccer. Thank you, Peter from Periscope. Please, oh, thank you, single mom doing her best for the super chat. I appreciate it. And uh, I could kind of tell, I could kind of tell. I can generally somewhat tell what's going on. I appreciate that. Anyway. I will get to calls, guys. I will get to calls. You can call in to 888-775-3773. Did you know that, um, and you may have known this better than I, some of you, especially the people who are, like, sensible and knowledgeable. Nixon was okay? Richard Nixon. Man, I wish I could show pictures, but it's all right. When Richard Nixon declared war on the media. (laughs) This is a Long Reads article. I'd never heard of Long Reads. Maybe I had, but I never really stuck in my mind. Writer Matt Giles. November 8th, 2018. This idiot compares Nixon to Trump, which is fine. That's fine. Oh. Will that work? Oh, man. I I can't even plug that in. Um, Because I don't have that USB drive thing. Uh, more than 40 years ago, Richard Nixon subtly changed the term, the modern presidency. During past administrations, the American news media had always been referred to as the press. But Richard Nixon, this was back in what, the 60s? Or the 70s? Whose contentious relationship with the nation's newsrooms was longstanding, tweaked that policy and began labeling the press as the media, a term that he felt, according to this guy, sounded more ominous and less favorable. That's right, because they're out on the media waves. The TV, the AC is on. Nice, cool, thank you. TV, newspaper, magazines, uh, radio, some radio, news radio. Some radio is probably all right, who knows. And he called it the media. Nice, there's Richard Nixon. Doesn't that look like a man? Clean shaven, too, you will notice. <laughs> Although his face, is, his face has more features than mine. Mine is kind of like featureless at the bottom, it looks like. Uh, but anyway, I'm just not used to seeing myself with no, no beard. Uh, media means medium, says Chris. Galaxy brain Chris. They stand between you and reality. Yeah. More ominous and less favorable, according to Matt Giles, is what Richard Nixon's motivation was for calling him the media. As John Marshall wrote in 2014 for The Atlantic, Nixon was the first president to exclusively use the term. That's a split infinitive there, to use the term exclusively. And subsequent presidents similarly at odds with the media, whose job it is to hold the country's chief executive in check, which, no, it's not. Uh, none were as vitriolic as Nixon. Nice. Even back then, the media was fake. Donald Trump has come the closest, evidenced by this week's, this is a reference from November 2018, November 8th, 2018, a couple years after he was elected. Second year in office. His first election, post-midterm election press conference, first in months, Quickly went off the rails moments after his opening remarks, this guy Giles says. Matt Giles. Devolving into presidential rants. Rants. Accusing the assembled of perpetuating hoaxes while advancing bogus claims of racist questions. Which, it was a racist question. It was anti-white. It might have been that April Ryan woman. Or was April Ryan previously on NPR? Was that another? Oh no, I think that was Yamiche Alcindor or something like that. That, like they're hard to they're hard to distinguish. Even Facebook's uh, algorithm, 
facial recognition algorithm agrees with me. Some of these black women, they're hard to distinguish. And I think that it's due to when you're fat, you lose, you lose a lot of features. And when you are uh, painted up with a lot of makeup, you also lose features, lose distinguishing features. You all start to look the same, which I think is why black women, there was higher rates of, of uh, mistakes with the facial recognition software. Did you hear about that in Hake News at the end of hour two today, I think? Anyway, uh, peddled by the fake media, bogus claims of racist questions. These people aren't honest. This guy himself is not honest covering this story, but it's interesting. The, surreal, the surreality, surrealness, of the conference was part carnival, part grand guignol, whatever that means, but wasn't without historical president. Asked how to change the tone of the country, Trump claimed it begins with the media. We used to call it the press, he said. Interesting. I didn't, I remember him saying that, but I didn't catch it because I didn't know about the history. He didn't credit Nixon, but the connection was readily apparent, this guy says. Even more when the administration followed up by barring CNN reporter Jim Acosta, remember that? From the White House, revoking his press credential of the veteran reporter and gadfly. Acosta had the temerity to first question the dog whistle issue, calling whites racist for defending their country, of the caravan, the invasion, the migrant caravan, these people invading our country, exploiting the fake laws, the anti-American laws within America. Follow up by asking about Robert Mueller's probe, the fake probe, Russia gate nonsense. He's in the process, he shielded the microphone from a White House aide att- attempting to censor him. I don't know if you remember that scene, but I remember, vaguely remember a White House aide trying to take the, the mic from Jim Acosta and greedy Jim Acosta, always seeking attention, making himself the story, grandstander, scum of the earth guy. I think he's Hispanic. Yeah, Acosta. 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 What a phony. Totally phony. Uh... Oh, censor him. Speaking of censorship, speaking of censorship, you are the free press now. I am the free press. Chris, Jesse Lee Peterson, the free press. We are the free press. And they are the establishment, so-called free press. They're not free. Free to destroy America. That's about it. They're trying to censor the, the real free, the true free press, true free speech of the people. YouTube age restricted, by the way, two of my videos just this week. Age restricted, probably because I played Tucker Carlson, the January 6th uh, thing. I guess it is sort of uh, age restriction friendly because it shows Ashley Babbitt getting killed. And I think it's unjustifiable. Is this Higgs clone? I think it was unjustifiable that uh, Capitol Cop Mike, whatever his name was, looked like an African migrant, <laughs> anti-white guy, going on NBC talking about, oh, I showed tremendous restraint. <laughs> Give me a break. Uh, so, th- so on that uh, scene, on that trailer, Patriot Purge by Tucker Carlson, first part of it was released on uh, November 1st, a couple days ago, it showed Ashley Babbitt getting shot and falling back. And so maybe that is kind of rough for the children to, to watch. But <clears throat> I don't know. Patriot Purge, Tucker Carlson's thing. But they're non communicative. YouTube is. Google is evil. We are the free press. You're the free press. You are the elite, as Trump said. You are the elite. They're not the elite. The free voice of the real people and many fakes uh, it should be, anyway, allowed on American social media, which is catering to China and European, which is anti-European, European Union think, beliefs in hate speech. They're pandering to that stuff. Communists. Communism. Uh, NBC News, November 20th, 2018, this uh, Michael Conway, former counsel of the U.S. House Judiciary Committee, he wrote this 
op-ed in NBC News, Enemies of America, Trump's public attacks on enemies of the people, Trump, I mean the media, echo Nixon's private press war, except worse, as in better, maybe. Was Trump better than Nixon, I wonder? Trump has not yet run afoul of criminal law that we know of, but his rhetoric may still have a more dangerous effect on press freedom. So, such absolute liars. Self-indulgent, uh, self-important, narcissistic, that's all, it's a word for selfish, right? I think. Narcissistic means selfish, right? Uh, people, reminds me of the melodrama about the Capitol protests. Because the Capitol protest, it gave a little scare, I guess, maybe, to the f- establishment politicians and the establishment Mainstream media, some of which is centered in Washington, D.C., as well as New York. But Washington, D.C., it got close. It was in the politician's backyard, if you will, right? Or front yard or whatever you want to say. It was in their backyard. When it's in the yards of the American people destroying their businesses, they don't care. Black Lives Matter and and Antifa destroying our local communities and world. And a few Trump supporters and feds get a little out of hand. A little rambunctious. <laughs> to use the black words for the wilding people. And they overreact and say, oh, it's a terrible attack. Give me a break. So that's what Trump, Trump was the voice, acted as part of the voice of the people. He was one of us. He spoke as one of us anyway. Never forget, here's a quote. This is from Richard Nixon, according to what I have seen online. Never forget the press is the enemy. The establishment is the enemy. The professors are the enemy. Wow. Very prescient. Is prescient a good word for what he's saying? What he said back in whenever this was? 70s, 60s? Professors are the enemy. Write that on a blackboard 100 times and never forget it. Richard Nixon. (laughs) Some intellectual answerer says Richard Milhouse Nixon saw enemies everywhere and had lists of them made to prove it. The coveted enemies lists. I remember hearing about enemies lists about, uh, about Obama. Obama. And it included the press, the establishment, Nixon's enemies list, right? The press, the establishment, the professors, celebrities, uh, black congressmen and congresswomen, (laughs) female congressmen, organizations, nice. So Richard Nixon, he seemed like he wasn't too bad. Right on Richard Nixon. Right on, right on. I appreciate you. Even if, uh, well, I don't know, he's dead now. Horrible. Anyway, uh, thank, shout out to Richard Nixon and Donald Trump. You guys did your jobs and did them pretty well. Is it true for, uh, is it true that the nationalists have been losing and losing and losing? Don't know. Don't know. Not our concern. We keep fighting for what's right. Right? Never lose heart. Never grow weary in doing what's right. Nice. Uh, let's see. You know, uh, paid family leave is an anti-family thing. Did you know that? The United States, according to the far-left female run outlet, The Skim, is one of only six countries in the world, says the far-left female run outlet this game, not to guarantee paid family leave. 
That's what Sleazy Joe is pushing. And he's not for families. The skim are not for families. The skim are feminists, by the way, side note. They're for abortion. They're for the LGBTIQ madness. IA++. 2SL. <laughs> Last week's effort to, efforts to change that in Amer- for America failed in Congress. They want to make us just like everybody else. Evil. Even more evil. The co-founders of the skim, Carly Zakin and Danielle Weisberg, Weisberg, uh, amplifying the conversation around parenthood in America. They were published an op-ed shining a light on how paid family leave, or lack thereof, has an impact. And they're trying to push this hashtag, show us your leave. These are the worst people in the world. They want women working. Child... Uh, universal pre-kindergarten or preschool and stuff like that. Obama was pushing that. He's not for families. He gave lip service. Oh, we need fathers. But, uh, mm mm-mm. No. Just the, just the scum of the earth pushing this stuff, pretending that they're about families. Trump is, uh, separating families at the border. These people pretending to be for families. They separated in order to come here into America and exploit money. Right? It's ridiculous. Guys, let me take a quick early break. And I want to play, can you pull up that, uh, that song from yesterday that we didn't play? If I can remember what it was called. (laughs) I think, say again? Cure, Cure, oh, Cure Violence with Violence. This is another Suffering in the Hideous Thieves song, guys. Suffering in the Hideous Thieves. It's an excellent band, in my opinion. I went and saw them twice. Once down in Anaheim, and once up in Seattle area or somewhere. Maybe... I, I forget, up there in the Pacific Northwest where this guy's based, Jeff Suffering. Jeff Betger is his real name. And it's about a messed up relationship, maybe a suicide attempt. Don't fall for that madness, guys, but it's really about the fallen state. PG-13, I will say. Kids, c- cover your ears. I hope you like it. I know I do. I was really pumped about sharing the song that I had prepared in addition to this song for today, but I don't know if I'll be able to get it over to Chris due to technical difficulties. I'm, I'm a boomer. Essentially a boomer. And I don't know how to do anything. <laughs> so guys, this is from the 2002 album Real Panic Formed. I will get back to your calls, more super chats, and more mess going on in the world. But in the meantime, cure violence with violence by suffering and the hideous thieves. Hang tight, and I'll be right back for hour two. Enjoy. Nothing, 
You caught my eye Anybody else Would have died So we balanced ourselves On Percocet Now it all comes back to this And it seems so meaningless But how could I have known I was young then I was dumb then, but how could I have known? I was young then, I was dumb then. These words tear picture. is the last time I will see your face and it will be forever before I say goodbye so carry on without me just forget I've been don't let all our scars go and cut you up again cause this will take some time This will take all of my time This will take some time Not bad, huh? Some time to heal This will take all of my time These words are
<laughs> Hake's breakup song in his teens. We all just have to suffer through it. That's not shoegaze, man. It's not shoegaze music. <laughs> it's Christian music. Please make it stop. Not bad. Very bad. <laughs> I was not in my teens when this came out. It was 21, 20. Suffering in the Hideous Thieves, people. Hope you liked it. Hope you liked it. <laughs> you know, uh, I th who is it? Taking Care of Business Bear gave me a link. Oh no, Uncle Ted 88. From uh, during the Kyle mess a year ago, and it's ongoing to this day. From fo day. from forward.com, David Ian Klein writes Kyle Rittenhouse wore a shirt with a coffee company's name on it, Black Rifle Coffee Company. Was that the time when, when uh, Elijah Schaefer, who was uh, supported by, sponsored by Black Rifle Coffee, Coffee Company. He said, he used that picture in, to advertise Black Rifle Coffee Company. And then they disavowed him. They're like, oh, we don't want to get involved in any politics. Of course they do. We just want to be for veterans. Just cowards. I remember covering that. It was a clear case of self-defense. But no. The mob, which is not, uh... Yeah, they love exploiting patriots, says Chris. Yeah. The mob. And now, now its Jewish owner of Black Rifle Coffee Company is being harassed by anti-Semites. It was a weird story, A. Owen says. Yeah, it was weird. Elijah Schaefer was in, with Blaze Media at the time. Is he still? I don't know. The Blaze. Formerly owned, I guess, by that Mormon guy who's a teddy bear giving to the illegal alien children person and he looks he looks and acts kind of like a teddy bear himself glenn beck who once used to act like he was tough he called obama a racist he called obama racist hates he hates white people and then he ended up apologizing for telling the truth Pfft. anyway i still like the guy elijah schaefer tweeted out oh kyle rittenhouse drinks the best coffee in america and promoted a code black rifle coffee company and they asked him to take it down and he understand. No, we didn't cut him off. Sleeping Giant said, Black Rifle Coffee, do you sponsor Kyle Rittenhouse? Black Rifle Coffee are Nazi and murder sympathizers? Who could have get murderer sympathizers? Says somebody. Who could have guessed that a coffee company named after a gun would be so extreme? Stupid, huh? Veteran owned. It says, untrue. We do not sponsor, nor do we have a relationship with the 17-year-old facing charges in Kenosha, Wisconsin. What a caricature of what this man is. How, why do you frame him as the 17-year-old facing charges in Kenosha, Wisconsin? Say, we, we don't have any re official relationship with the young man who successfully defended himself with the Second Amendment against anti-American attackers and his personal attackers, Rosenbaum, it was clear from uh, eyewitness account, and clear from, it was clear from video footage, Rosenbaum's mindset, and it was clear that Kyle was there to help, not to hurt anyone. But he was ready to hurt somebody who was attacking his person, which is what they were doing. Anthony Huber. We're not in the business of profiting from tragedy, he claims. 
the founder and CEO, Evan Hafer. And it's so typical for these people to be disloyal to the values of America. Very disloyal. It's a fact. So anyway. And they don't have to, but they didn't have to go as far as they do, totally distancing themselves and jump it, pouncing on, just caving to the mob. Stand up to the mob. You don't have to, you don't have to sponsor Kyle, but stand up to the mob for who, for the, uh, what do you call that? What do you call that? The lynch mob trying to lynch Kyle's, smear Kyle's good name. It's ridiculous. There was a tweet from uh, the first, I'm getting this tip from somebody, uh, from Arutz Shiva tweeted out November 1st. Israel National News, Trump said, Israel literally controlled Congress until 10 years ago. And he laments the growth of anti-Israel sentiment in Congress. Israel had such power, and rightfully, over Congress, Trump, Trump said. <laughs> Interesting. Funny. Our real President Trump saying it like it is. <laughs> yeah. Evil people just eating each other. The biggest change I've seen in Congress, this is a, supposedly a quote in an interview with Ari Hoffman uh, last week. The biggest change I've seen in Congress, it, Israel literally owned Congress. You understand that? 10 years ago, 15 years ago, Trump said. Today, it's almost the opposite. You have AOC and Ilhan Omar, these people who hate Israel with a passion. They're controlling Congress. Israel is not a force in Congress anymore, he exclaimed. <laughs> Israel had such power and rightfully over Congress, and now it doesn't. <laughs> he accused American Jews of not liking Israel. He called them very disloyal, too. That's where I got that. Very disloyal to America, to Israel, to what's right. Citing his greater popularity in Israel than among U.S. Jews, who are mostly atheists and Democrats, and just... Blind brainwashed intellectuals, the scum of the earth, blind leading the blind. I would not have, I would have thought that I would have done better with the Jewish vote, he said, because he loves everybody, right? Grew up in New York, accepted all the things that those Jewish liberals in New York accepted. He was, he was for the gays. He was even for Bruce Jenner going into the wrong restroom. That's how liberal Trump was. He at one point was very pro abortion. And then he uh, kind of woke up and snapped out of that to, to a certain extent. He was still for the exceptions, the rape and incest stuff, which don't make any sense, but whatever. Our real president telling the plain truth. And it's, and it's not as if it's a positive change. I know there's a lot of Israel critics and Jewish, you know, the Jewish liberal or Jewish just not quite nationalist critics uh, in the... What do you call that? In the chat? The live chat that I have here? Uh, it's not a positive development that Cortez and Ilhan Omar and... Because they're, they're not for Christians. They're not for whites. They're not for America. They're just for f going from, from bad to worse. If you think that... Because a lot of people claim Israel got us into a lot of these wars. Maybe they did. I don't know. But they claim that. You think we're going to have headed for peace now? No. Uh-uh. Not with women in charge and female-minded uh, sleazy Joe Biden in charge. No, we're not headed for peace. We're not headed for uh, preservation of, of those beautiful s Southern Christian lives. Southern Christians who were joining the military. Now they're probably dis... Uh, they're not, in, they're not invited into the um, military anymore. They're getting kicked out of the military. Who were, uh, Uncle Ted 88 says, they were hu they're huge Zionists. Take, stop. What is she talking about? Referring to Cortez and Ilhan Omar? Something is changing, that's for sure, and it's not a positive change. 
this turn the the people who hate Israel today they hate you too just FYI that's my that's my only point that's my only point he said it like it was <laughs> Skip says, hey, Trump was no great white hope. He was just another politician playing the game. I don't know, Skip. I don't, I don't, I don't see it that way. I do not see it that way. But I appreciate it, guys. Let me see. I think there might have been. Oh, yeah, another super chat real quick. Single mom doing her best. Appreciate you. The song was okay until the singer jumped on like a divorced, drunk husband (laughs) at a karaoke bar. Yeah, I know. A lot of people were not fans of Jeff Betger. Jeff Suffering. He used to do that screaming punk rock music. 90 Pound Wuss. Just wild screaming. I loved it. And I like this too. Maybe it's my subverted tastes. Tastes have been subverted to liking discord and, and miserable stuff. <laughs> Skip was concerned about me liking that mess of music. Anyway, one thing I am pleased about somewhat is uh, the elections. What do you think about the elections? I'm, I am somewhat okay, pleased, happy. Youngkin beat McAuliffe out. Who would have thought? They were trying to call him. They were bringing in the false smear upon Charlottesville, adding lies upon lies upon lies. The whites in Charlottesville, Virginia, at the Unite the Right rally. Can you sing, James? Yes. We need more 16 horsepower. Yeah, I I liked them. The Unite the Right guys in Charlottesville are to this day being persecuted by anti-American people, lawyers slash liars. To this day! Atheists and white haters and Christian haters and the beautiful South haters. But the parents getting fed up. That was a blessing in disguise, would you not say? A blessing in disguise that the, uh, Children had to go and stay home during the scamdemic, the communist shutdowns. And, uh, and say, oh, your kids have to learn in, in, at home. Distance learning. Learn on Zoom. Learn on your iPads. And some of the parents who were able to stay home were able to witness. And there were some viral videos of children, their the dumb anti-Trump teacher, male teacher, I remember specifically, was played on the Jesse Lee Peterson show last year, a male anti-Trump teacher was trying to brainwash a child who referenced the Trump website as something that he uh, supported, whose policies he supported. Oh, you're, you're supposed to use other sources. Well, fine. But, oh, it seems racist. Seems, seems not nice to have a wall. A stupid teacher was saying that, saying that. Pathetic. So the brainwashing became more apparent um, in the schools, became more apparent to the parents who should have known better many, in many cases, but many of them not paying attention. So this Casey Johnson guy, a uh, history professor, he quotes this New York Slimes article from the 31st of uh, October, a couple days back, a few days ago. I'm a Hillary Biden voter, said Glenn Miller. Not to be confused with uh, Glenn Miller, who ended up shooting up a synagogue and killing some Christians, so-called Christians, at the synagogue a few years ago, several years ago. Glenn Miller is a lawyer from McLean, talking about, uh, from Virginia, right? He walked into a Youngkin rally in southern Fairfax County Saturday night that drew more than a thousand people. He explained his tipping point working from home and hearing his teenage daughter's teacher make a comment during virtual lesson about white men as modern-day slaveholders. Wow. That was his tipping point. There are a lot of people like me who are annoyed, he said, 
adding he was able to get to vote for Youngkin because he did not associate him as a Trump Republican. What a shame. People are so blind. Uh, My problem with Trump was I thought he was embarrassing. I just don't think Youngkin is going to embarrass me or the state. Whatever, Glenn Miller. (laughs) Lawyer from McLean. Hillary Biden voter. Whatever, I'll take it. This Casey Johnson rep- uh, history professor guy says, obviously a class element here, since it applies only to parents who were able to work from home or mothers who were stay-at-home mothers as they were supposed to be, right? Zoom allowed parents to get a sense of fashionable cu- curricular trends that wouldn't have been possible pre-2020. Thank you, communist shutdowns. Glenn Miller is a swing band leader, too, yeah. Play the trumpet player or something. Yeah, I know. There's all kinds of Glenn Millers. Very interesting, huh? Attack on whites. They couldn't see Trump's telling the truth. This guy couldn't. But, uh... Yeah, Glenn Miller was a KKK leader, thought, thought Doom Jesus. Yeah, there's, that's another... He was also Fraser Glenn Cross, but he was also known as Glenn Miller. Yeah, that's true. And he ended up shooting up some, killing some people. I, I think he died now. He's dead now. Before he committed that crime, he was just on the internet being uh, kind of crazy. He was interviewed by Jesse Lee Peterson, and he said, Oh, if my children date outside their race, I will kill them. They know their daddy. The crazy guy. Angry. In Virginia, that was where they were pushing the transgenders in the wrong bathrooms. They were pushing the critical race theory madness. Loudoun County, Virginia, they were pushing that stuff. Loudoun County is where that girl was so-called raped, if you believe it. I don't know if I believe it, honestly. Skirt-wearing, quote-unquote, male student found guilty. Was he wearing a skirt? I don't know. It's hard to get at the truth of this thing. In the bathroom rape. And they did all, like, he did, like, nasty, vulgar, perverted sex acts, allegedly, according to, you know, convicted or whatever, against this girl. But this, he, they had had sex before in that same bathroom, I guess. It was, or, I don't know if it was that same bathroom, but it was, like, a hookup spot. It didn't really have to do with transgender policy. But it's degeneracy in the, in the bathrooms, and there was some kind of a cover-up or a looking the other way with regard to this, this rape thing, alleged rape thing. And I'm not one to jump bandwagon about rapes, right? Because Scott Smith is the guy who was arrested. Remember that vi- violent arrest on May 28th? His daughter... May 28th was his daughter was supposedly attacked by a skirt-wearing boy, according to Daily Mail. On May 28th, Daily Mail, I don't know if they're reliable. A juvenile judge, uh, juvenile court judge found the boy guilty, the young man, young male, guilty on two counts of blah, 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 sick, and forced blah, 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 blah. Same boy is accused of so-called raping another girl, different girl, in a different school in the district in October, four months after the first incident. Smith family has been demonized by the left for protesting against transgender bathrooms. Obama was campaigning for Terry McAuliffe uh, a week ago or whenever that was in Virginia. Smeared Glenn Youngkin for campaigning against the mess going on in uh, Loudoun County. Youngkin had mentioned that rape of that girl, but I don't know if I would call that a rape because she had already been having sex with the, with the guy. The defense attorneys said, oh, she would already been having sex with him, so he took it as uh, consent. What a mess. Obama called it trumped-up culture wars because he doesn't want people fighting back against the anti-whiteness, against the uh, anti-Christianness. Against the uh, attack on the children, the, blind, the brainwashing of the children. 
by people who were brainwashed as children, as many teachers are. Gotta have patience, but fight hard for what's right. But it turns out, that's a ra- so-called rape with an asterisk, in my opinion. Because the girl was already degenerate and going around with this guy. And she didn't want it. That's, I get it. I guess you could call that... Blech. Terrible. But I think that the uh, conservatives are falling for a... Falling for a scam by, by jumping on the... Oh, calling this stuff rape. Not a good thing. Anyway, let me get to a call or two, guys. John in Kentucky. What's up, John? How are you doing? Man, I thought you banned me, man. No, I banned Jeremiah. You think you're Jeremiah? You banned Jeremiah? Yeah. What did he do? Oh, he was getting really vulgar and explicit and violent, uh, using violent language, you know, wishing to do some really nasty, evil things. And he kept on repeating Man. it. I, I advised him not to repeat it, and he just kept on repeating it. So I don't want to encourage that type of... You can't, you can't allow that type of mess talk. I mean, it's your show. It's your yeah, show. Yeah. But would you... You know, banned two of my favorite people. Who are, who are your other... Who's your other favorite? T... T and Jeremiah, you're going you're gonna to do You know, I like next. those guys. I like T, I like Jeremiah, but I can't just allow them to just cross lines like that. It's kind of like so a, Chuck you're a next. father, right? So, you're a father, right? Yeah. Yeah. And when uh, you set a line for your child, you, you don't allow them to just get away with crossing that line. I don't disown them, though. And, and it, I didn't disown them. I banned them from the show. That's disowning. That's not disowning. That's not having anything to do with them. That's disowning. That's what it is. I, I'm talking about them right now. I'm having something to do with them. Yeah. I wish them well. Jeremiah shouldn't have got out of hand like that. He was he was getting emotional. He should. Yeah. He knows that we're disciplined, and we shouldn't be letting you, somebody like you, get to us. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I hope that he checks himself. If he apologize, he doesn't even have to apologize to me. He just, I just wanted him to apologize to the audience. And it's, and it's not even that he didn't apologize. He didn't even acknowledge. He was playing dumb. So I'm like, you're banned then, man. He's like, all right. And then he hung up. Maybe he'll come. If he wants to get back on, he can apologize. I I don't know. I might, I might be lenient. I doubt, I doubt he's going to do that, man. It it ain't, it ain't that crucial. It's not crucial to admit uh, you're wrong. No, to to apologize to your audience, man. Your audience is some weirdos. You're are you a weirdo? I wouldn't apologize to them too. Are you no. a weirdo? You're my audience. I'm talking about people who agree <laughs> with one hundred percent of the things you say. I'm not I'm even concerned listener. about the people who I'm agree. I'm a hate listener. I'm a hate listener. <laughs> At least you admit it. It's not good, with, man. I disagree with all this. I listen for entertainment. I don't listen because you're telling the truth. But I stand you, for morals, like and you pretended like you stand for the same morals that I stand for. I disagree with you stand for morals because huh. you stand for white people and what's beneficial for white people. But what, what's for beneficial everybody. for I've been I stand for what's what's right, and it just so happens that that's beneficial for white people. It's beneficial for everybody. Yeah, but white people are not inherently right. That's what you. That's, I didn't that's say they were. You don't have to say it to everything you say uh, lean oh, so, toward that way. So you're a mind. So you think you're a mind reader? No, I'm not I'm a mind reader. Talking I can to you. take everything you. I can take everything you say and be like, man, he's just so white. This white, that white, this white, that. Like <laughs> everything's white. Everything's white. It's white power, right? No, haven't you noticed that the? <laughs> uh, haven't you noticed that the whites tend to vote correctly on the moral issues? Man. I We've been over politics. this before. Y'all set up a system like that. That politics stuff, man, that stuff is a trap. Just like that guy said a second ago about Trump. Trump plays the game just like all them other politicians. And you said, well, I don't agree with that because you're stuck in that system. If you were being honest, you would know that Trump is is playing the game. Trump don't care about them supporters, man. He don't, Every time he goes he to one of them everybody. rallies. That is, see, you, see, you're brainwashed by Trump. <laughs> 
<laughs> your brain, he don't. He does not love everybody. He cares about that money. What do you know he cares about, about him? That power. What do you know? I mean, it's just if you're being honest. I am being honest. I know that's hard for you. I know that's hard for you. But if you're being honest, you would be fifty fifty on everything. You fifty could tell, fifty. Yeah, that's, on everything. That's like, that's practically that's not morally straight. <laughs> so, so in this country, if you're a conservative or if you're a Democrat, why do you have to agree with everything the uh, Republicans say, or you have to re- agree with everything the Democrats say? You don't. Why is that? I I don't do that. Why do you think? Why do you think? What makes you think that I think that? All right, just name some things that Republicans uh, find like abortion. Uh, uh, you're not for welfare. baby killing, are you? No, I'm not for baby killing, but I asked you that question before too. You say you don't really care. It's just it's just one of those things you have to vote on. You say you don't really care. I don't. You don't you, really don't, care, you don't care about about you can't care about everybody. I don't even think God yes, cares can. like that. Oh yes, he does. No, he doesn't. For his people for his people. For his people. The Israelites. Mm. Right. <laughs> okay, whatever, man. <laughs> but uh I had an off-topic question. I want to talk about the Bible. I didn't hear nobody else talking about none. So, uh, do you believe there's going to be slavery in heaven? Uh, or, or is your con- maybe or is your concept I, of I heaven? I haven't considered it. Or is your concept of heaven like when you die, you go in the clouds and you live the pearly gates and all that crap? I don't really have a concept of heaven. Don't you think you should if you're a Christian? Because the Bible speaks of it. I mean, Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and then also, like, afterwards, I guess we will be in heaven if we are truly of God. But where is heaven, You though? think you're of God? I, obviously, I do. You know that. <laughs> Man. But, uh... Doesn't every heaven, angry heaven. person, self-righteous anger. Anyway. No, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, so I don't you, have anger like that. So why are you into the notion of slavery in heaven? You agree slavery is not man, so bad then? Not necessarily so bad? Like I told you before, it depends on who it depends on who's the oppressor and, and who's underneath. See, for y'all, everything's okay. It's slavery, I don't think of slavery as necessary op- oppression. Man, why do you view things so weirdly? Oppre- oppression. Yeah. When you have black people in change, that's oppression. Not necessarily, man. That makes absolutely no sense, hey. Think about it. Were they better off here or where they were before? They're better off now than they were before. Right, but when they, when they were in those chains, do you know if, if they were better off here or where they were before? Oh, they were better off then when they had uh, a, a sense of who they were. When they when they still had a little bit of their culture, but then when you brought them, but here, you you have this false sense of who you are, and you're not away. better off. You're no, worse you off than some of the false. slaves. Those slaves were actually you Christians. Have, you say I have a false sense. I used to have a false sense until I found out who I really was. Man, but now now that I know who I am, everything makes sense. That's you're the mis- way I look at you're it. You're misguided. No, I just don't think the way that Pardon I me. used to when I was programmed. And and you're deprogrammed I, in your mind, huh? Yes, I am, man. Only only because all the stuff I used to read in the Bible, it used to look completely different yeah. to me. I, I was in that fake Christianity stuff. <clears throat> and then when I got the truth, the Bible actually made sense once I got the truth. It really didn't make sense at first. It was just a, a feel-good deal. You love God. You ask for forgiveness. You go to heaven. It was bull crap. Is what it was. Man, it, it was the stuff. It, it was the stuff y'all gave us. Y- y'all gave it to the slaves. And you and should be thankful for that because the slaves are happier than you. No, no. We pass it on generation to generation. The slaves were happier this, than you, freer than you. Hey. Hey, that's why you hear so much about the Israelites now, because people are waking up. That's you not think waking it's up. Nonsense. You think it's nonsense. But, you know, I called about but Isaiah look at this, 14 look at, and 2. Look at the fruits of the Israelites. Anger, uh, hating white people, bitterness, God, carrying God on about slavery, people. pretending it was oppression, 
no, no sense of appreciation, no love, no actual <laughs> self-control. Nope. No love to his oppressors? Is that what you're saying? No love, period. Not even for your not even for one another. Well You're you know, no better than the nation not... of Islam, suckers. Oh yeah, we're definitely better than the of, nation of Islam. A bunch of hate filled worship. A little bit more disciplined than the criminals. Are we supposed to, are we supposed to love the people who took our entire culture and made us uh, yes. accept their culture? Yes. No, no way. Yes. No way. Yes. If if we took Hey, if we took your last name and put our last name on you, if we took all the, all the, uh, whatever your original language was, I don't even know what Cry y'all spoke back river. in the cage. If, if the shoe was on the other foot, you cry would be saying Cry me that, a river. It, it's going to be. It's no, it's no need to cry. Yeah, but it is. You That's all at, you're doing. Can you look at Isaiah? Hey, can you look at Isaiah 14 and 2? You know how pathetic you sound? Look, you don't even want to read it because you know... You're going to be slaves in heaven. Oh, yeah. I know that. Okay. <laughs> if you read, you, so you, you think I'm going to have... Yes, as a slave. Aw, thank you, man. <laughs> Look, man, you... Hey, uh, why did you do your face like that, too, man? Uh, I wanted to do something different. Go back to how I was... Ten years ago, bored. I pulled this. Huh? You, you know that takes your strength away as a man, right? That's feminine. No, not necessarily, to man. Ball, to have a bald face, yes. It's not called a bald. A, man. The, a face a, that's shaven is not called bald, dude. You're Learn bald, English. Bald face. Bald you're face bald liars. Face lie? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's you. Nuh-uh. But look, a but lion I'm telling grows the truth. a mane. Bald face truth. Listen, a lion grows a I mane I think it's called bald, a man. Is it bald face? <laughs> I don't even Did know. Did you hear what I'm saying? That's huh? probably right, bald face. But a lion grows a mane because it's a man. It's mature. Oh, it's you're masculine. a lion. <laughs> like Snoop yeah, Dogg? Yeah, right, Give yeah. me a break, man. But you shave your face off. You go back feminine. I didn't shave That's my face them, uh, off. I shaved my beard off. Hey, man, you, you're just trying to play word games now. You know what you're I mean when play- I say that. I, I know. Okay, whatever. But anyway. Well, thank you for but the yeah, feedback. Man. Thank you for your concern for the Goyim or whatever you guys, people call me. Esau. Whatever. Esau. Esau was a great man. But, he was red. But yeah, man, you look like a serial killer now with your face like that. Uh, so do you. Blacks are more frequently serial killers. Did you know? That is not true. Yeah, it is. Look it up. And also, you know, you know, we was talking about pedophiles. Seven out of ten. Blacks are more likely to be pedophiles, pedophiles too. Look it up. Seven out of ten is white. Blacks look are, it up. Blacks Seven are more likely. Uh, you're you're Seven counting Hispanic. You're, you're counting Hispanics and Jews. It doesn't count as white Christians, dude. No, no, Blacks no, no. are more likely I'm to be pedophiles. It's I'm a fact. Your skin color. Look it up. Seven out of look ten is white. Look it up. You look it up. You look it up. You can find all that stuff. You can find all that stuff on the DOJ. Why are you so perverted Seven. that you're into that stuff? Perverted. Yeah, you're perverted. Man, you're into that stuff. I'm not into that stuff. You you're it. the one who brought it up. I you can't even repeat the, are, are the Loudoun County so-called rape, bathroom rape thing. You I can't said, even repeat those you words. 14-year-old girls are developed. Many of them are think, because they don't have their I, I fathers. I think they're kids. I think they're kids. They're underage. I don't, they're I don't immature. look at them as women. I'm not into I that. I don't look at them as women. I didn't say they so were, say. but they're not little kids. So and you so you're just repeating... Kids. You're repeating nonsense, trying to play gotcha with me when you're the perv. I have you're 14 year old girls come trick or, trick or treating in my house. They're Doesn't still mean kids. anything. They stu- they They're dress and many of them dress like sluts, don't they? Oh man, you're from evil. You, from the cult, many of them do. You know that from the culture you're that evil. you defend. From the culture that you no, defend. No. Yes, you this do. This is your American culture. No, this is Babylon. This is, no, you this are is American. American culture. You're American and you don't even know it. Not by choice, but because I was forced to be this. So what? Uh, so was I. Oh, oh hey. I was forced to be born here. Be thankful. Perfect. You're proud of it, though. You're proud of it. All the evil that comes with it. I'm You're not proud, proud of it. it. I'm just, ha- I'm grateful. Yeah, you are. I'm grateful for America. I'm You're grateful, grateful for, for the decency that's here. All, all the evil presidents that came, that came through. Look at all yourself. Your Look at your leaders. own evil within your own heart, you evil person. I don't have evil toward my people. Yes, you do. You don't have evil. You no, don't I have don't. good towards anyone. Do you want to talk to Bible yes, go-to I guy? I hate Bible go-to guy. His voice sounds so annoying because he thinks he knows everything. 
Hey, is that a yes or a no? And, is that a yes or a no? Ask him. Yeah, I'll talk to him. Okay. I want to ask him about four. I got a question. And now, if he just starts talking as soon as he gets on here, I'm going to hang up. All right. Run away, little coward. <laughs> here no, I'm not a comes, coward. Yeah, you are. Here comes you're Bible Go To Guy. Coward. You're a bald faced coward. Bible Go To Guy, you're on the line with uh, John from Kentucky. Bible Go To Guy. I'm from Kentucky. I'm honored. <laughs> hey, John. Uh, Bible Go To Guy. Hey, Bob, go to that. I got a question really, for you. I got a question you for you. Really into, well, I'll, I'll answer hey. the question. You guys All right, are uh, really into Isaiah, no, no, Isaiah hold on, John, 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 hold your question. Let him, uh, he, oh, ask, I, thought, I thought I was going to ask a question. You can, oh, you can fault. ask him after. No, you, you claim that that's what you wanted to do first, but you're not in charge of the show. Yeah. Um, and you're not either. But, I know, but, but he's me. following my, what I Hake said. Hake giving me, James Hake is giving me the green light. So, um, <laughs> Paul, listen to that voice, man. As Paul had a um, an identity that few people were right about, and he said that he was a Jew of Jews, he was a Hebrew of Hebrews, he was he was he high was up in the, in the hierarchy of the um, Jewish religion with the Sadducees and Pharisees, and yet he gave up all that identity for 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 what for what a new heart. He want, he knew when he was hating Christians and sending them to their death that that, that was hurting again. him. And Jesus said it's hard to kick against the against the you know um, prickly sticks. And that's because what? he was Jesus was referring to his heart. Yeah, he was sending these people to their to prison and to death, and it was hurting him. But he was just going by the law, by his identity, and but he gave up all that identity to have a new identity, which is a man of the heart. And you guys are all in Should I ask oh, a question? I found myself, now that I have my new identity. Yeah, you even, oh, I, you, I know you even a, heard it, I'm you even heard it when he was interrupting you, Bible go to guy. He's all, Paul was black. <laughs> He's all into you phony don't identity. You the absolute truth. You're, hey, it's you're as shallow as the mainstream media, John. You're uh, shallow. Hold you're on. shallow. Hold on. Let me let me let Bible Go To Guy finish because I interrupted him as well. It, did you well, have anything else? Go forever. No, that was it. Okay. That was it. That these guys are so hey. worried about their outward identity that doesn't change the heart. Yeah. No it's outward important. identity it's important. on can change your heart. Yeah. Listen, listen. Your Give spirit's evil, John. Give me 30 seconds. Go ahead. All right, so race is important because you guys, you guys took Christ and made him into a white European. That is not his true identity. We didn't so do everybody that. Who came, it's a false accusation. Right, you didn't interrupt. Go ahead. Bible go to guy. Yes, I did, but go ahead. No, you didn't. Yes, but I anyway, did. when when all the black people come up under Christianity and you have this false image of Christ, that's sort of like this white superiority that white people are better <laughs> because. The son of God is white. You understand what I'm saying? So if if you no, were to leave an Christ idiot. as he was, no, you're hold an up, idiot. Uh, idiot. Hold up, idiot. <laughs> okay, hold don't up, even. Idiot. All right, Bible, go to guy. Hold on, hold on. Hold up, idiot. <laughs> so in our brains, when we're growing up and we're seeing everything white, it mess. It's, it's, it messes with our head. See, y'all didn't have your that flesh problem head? because. Because y'all whitewash everything, and y'all make it look like white people are the best thing to ever to ever happen on this planet. <laughs> you guys steal everything. <laughs> yeah, you okay. even stole white God. People, white we people, even stole a bunch of stuff in Black Lives Matter what protests. Happened, what happened was black people haven't done anything for 2,000 years, kind of like the North American Indians. All they abandoned. That, but see, that's not true. But see, that's well, not true. Well, that's, that's definitely true. I even heard it from a black preacher on TV once. Other than Jesse, I care less. Like, you people need to, and he was talking to his black congregation, we need to, um, we need to like, we need to understand how bad we have been, and and he went on to explain that no city, no 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 civilization has come from black folks for for, for who knows how long. It's been it's been a couple thousand years at least, but white people took the, the the words of Jesus and they took them to heart and they made great civilizations with those with those words that Jesus spoke. You know, you John, you, you sound as Egyptian. you sound as shallow guys, and petty as you the, guys. Hold on, you guys, you guys think you're Egyptian. Hold on, you know that. Hold on, 
John, you you sound as shallow and petty as the mainstream media pretending that, oh, black people need to see their own race do well. I like these so that they sound can, effects y'all so doing, these, these, these imit- oh, imitations. Oh, bl- white Jesus is traumatizing the blacks. Oh, they need to see black Barack Obama be president. You're pathetic. Nobody cares Nobody cares about Barack Obama. You guys make it a Nobody cares deal. about white Jesus either. You're just a sucker yes, for the you brainwashing. Do. You, guys do you don't care. know psychology. You're a phony. Would, would you worship? Would you worship a black Christ? <clears throat> yeah, we, we do. Calm we, down, John. We, what a mess. We worship. That's what I thought. We, you can't answer that. We I love. Don't, it's a nonsensical question. I never was raised not, to believe Jesus not. is white. You're you're hey, lying. John, the, you you are. I was lie. never raised your to believe Jesus is white. Your grandparents. Had, your grandparents had a white Jesus. In no, their they house. didn't. You don't know anything. Yes, they did. You're just making up stuff. Bible go to God. Does race matter? Jesse Jesse Peterson. Has single handedly about him redone <laughs> civilization. He has re he oh, has oh my reestablished. God. You guys are in a cult, man. You guys are in a Jesse cult. Peterson yeah, okay. Has From the Black Hebrew Israelite. Jesse Israelite. Peterson is a once. <laughs> what makes him a leader? Year, what, what makes Jesse a leader? John. Jesse is a once in a two thousand year phenomenon. He has re- Jesse has is redone a what matters <laughs> as a civilization. Jesse has taken. False Christian preachers. Jesse to can barely because, read because they I'll don't. They hold. don't speak from the heart. They're nothing of the heart. Yeah, they're all about, like Jesse said, they're all about, um, you know, religiosity and, and right. uh, what's that word that Christians like to use? Pharisees or hypocrites? No, no, no. Um, what they legalism? Do, you know, they they research religion and stuff like that. Intellectuals. Oh, yeah, theology. Yeah, yeah. The theology. Right. They're about theology. They're not about the heart. Yeah. And, um, and I got to, I got, I promised John that I'd let him an- ask you a question, Bible Go To guy. Go ahead. Speak. I mean, no, don't tell me to speak. I'll speak when I feel like speaking. <laughs> but uh, I, Isaiah 14, verse 1 and 2. What do you think about that? What do you think that means? What do I think what means? Isaiah 14 and 1. I'm not. I don't. I don't have that you, memorized. You're the Bible go-to guy. Can you please answer the question? Go, Bible, Bible go-to, go-to guys. guys. True Bible go-to guys don't memorize the Bible. Yeah. They can look up you any should. verse, and then, and then they and, and and then the Holy Spirit will will reveal. To you me should what know it means. the Bible. You should know the Bible. No. You shouldn't be making up stuff <laughs> as you go. The Bible is the Word of God. No, it's not. The Bible, no, no, no. Yes, it is. The, no, it's the not. The written word does not trump the, the Bible. Is the word of God. It never says I that. Don't go by Jesse's, you, I don't go by Jesse's. The philosophy. Bible doesn't even call itself that, John. John. You're a John, sucker. You're, you're, it doesn't, you're it doesn't have to. It's inspired by God. He said you're he wouldn't change not one jot, no, not one, no one tittle. tittle. All right, so well, see, the reason why to, they like to humor this stuff. young man, to humor this young so man. The Bible go to guy can't answer the me, Bible question. It's because it's a dumb question. No, it's not a tell dumb me what the question. Yes, it is. It's a dumb question. He won't even he won't even tell us what it says because because he's a gotcha type of a person, not an honest type of a person. I'm on, I'm on my phone. I don't have the Bible in front of me. For you, so you don't even know what it says. I, I know what it, I can paraphrase it, but paraphrase it. You know, I want you to read it. All right, I'll read it. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. That's the Ashkenazis, and no. uh, set them in their own right. land. And the strangers shall be joined to them. The strangers are the white Christians, that's y'all. Americans. That's y'all. Yeah, that's and, y'all. Uh-huh. and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And the people shall take them and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land for the Lord, the servants and the handmaids. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were and shall rule over their oppressors. <laughs> and so the black Hebrew that's Israelites are so blind that they think that America <laughs> is oppressing them. What idiots. Am I right? America, Embarrassing. America is Babylon. That right. America, America is Babylon. You have no Jesus clue what you're talking going, about. Jesus is going to bring America to its knees. You're going to worship the true Messiah. He's going to put us over you guys because you guys are our oppressors. All right. Enough of that, John. I got to go, man. Nice, nice talking with you. Bible go-to guy. I appreciate it, man. Hey, thanks, James. All right. Talk to you later. You Bye. too. Uh, Brandon M. gave a super chat. Apologies for that. Kind of dragged. Uh, of course, me just talking all day 
kind of drags too sometimes. Brandon M says, so John just admitted that they did basically what Europeans did in the Middle Ages. They radicalized Jesus to fit the current trends. Jesus wasn't white or black. He was Aramaic. Whites don't think Jesus was li- lily white. I have never seen this blonde haired, blue eyed Jesus that they, that they claim existed. <laughs> They're just lying about it. I was never portrayed, oh, Jesus, white. No, nah, because we're not into that. Whites are the least into race, sometimes to our detriment. Oftentimes. Uh, Bibby42 says, Hake looks like he is ready to be Linkin Park's new singer after that idiot. Can I say idiot? Committed suicide? Father of six? Chester Bennington? Dumb liberal Trump hater, by the way? What's up with these liberals committing suicide? He's one step closer to the edge. He's about to break, <laughs> says Bibby42. Well, that's kind. Actually, that's not kind. That's messed up. But thank you, Bibby42, faithful uh, friend. Faithful friend? Supporter, anyway. <laughs> Let's get to another call. Skip in Augusta, Georgia. How are you doing, Skip? Hey, James. Hey, how you doing? Fine. I, was I wrong for hanging up on John? He was just spouting off... It, f- false Israelite propaganda. I Look felt here. I could have saved you. I could have saved you twenty four minutes and forty nine seconds if I would have been on there, and we could have proved this black and white thing right off the rip. Because God, I am what I am. Right. I, he didn't say I. He didn't say I is what I is. Yep. He said I am what I am. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that that would have did it all right. That's all you got to know right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But it's just foolishness. It's foolishness to want to want to give his opinion about what he thinks the Bible interprets. You know, and it's like the Bible go-to guy said, the Holy Spirit. You know, you open the Bible up and you start reading Scripture. The Holy Spirit will come to you and tell you, you know, what what the meaning of that Scripture is. Right. If you got an if you got an alternative motive, like I think John does with the Black Israelite, you're going to automatically make everything that you read fit your narrative to what you want it to, what you want it to, to say. Apparently you know? this has been around since the 1800s or 1900s that the there's been blacks who think that they're the true Israelites. It's it's been around for some time and and it's it's a bunch of it's a pack of lies. <laughs> what a mess. Yeah. It's a mess, just like everything else is a mess. You know, nothing's going good right now. Really, if you think about it, nothing, nothing in this society is going good. Look at the economy right now. Look how, look how uh, all these ships are off on the coast. We can get our goods then. You know, when I sent Stacy in the grocery store yesterday to get me a pound of bacon, and uh-huh. I love me some bacon, nice. but I can't afford to eat it like I usually do because it costs so doggone much. Everything is expensive now. Yeah, you know. And we and look 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 every time I turn on the TV, or I got several channels on the, on YouTube, that, that, like Chicago and Memphis news yeah. stations and uh, and everything is about black on black crime. Right. I have yet to see anything about the white supremacists sneaking in with the hood zone and shooting up the black folks. I ain't seen nothing about no white supremacy. I know. I don't see nothing about white folks causing any of this mess. White just you know? are too nice to the blacks. And they've been that way, maybe even during the slavery times. I don't know. What well, the worst, the worst, in my opinion, the, the worst thing that happened to the blacks in the slavery when they was brought over here, you know, the Jews owned the slave ships and they brought them over here. And I think that was pretty I've heard that. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you, you know, you got to think about it. the blacks sold them into slavery. We didn't go over there. You know, and just say, "Hey, you got anybody? You know, you, you know, you want to want to sell us or whatever." I no, heard there were some. I heard there were some white kings who said, "You have to sell us more slaves," <laughs> and so they were de- <laughs> they were selling them by force. But who knows? So what? Well, you know what? This is twenty twenty. We treated them well <laughs> overall in America. I would say. I dare say. Yeah, yeah. You don't. You don't care if you're John Deere tractor when you want to try to get some work out of it. You, you know, right. you treat it good. Yeah, you be good to him. You know. Yeah. But this is 2021, and you got to get over all that, John. Yeah. And anybody who is still holding on to that slavery stuff, let me ask you something. Yeah. How did these? 
how do these black people that are lawyers, like Joe Kenyon, or <laughs> doctors or engineers, how do they become successful? Why come they wouldn't hail back like all these other so-called blacks are being held back by the white man? They had decent family, <laughs> halfway decent families, for one. And then, actually, those lawyers, they're some of the worst people, honestly. Spiritually, they yeah, are oppressed bad, by Satan. That was a bad example, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> right. But you, know, but you think about it. You know, I was, I was telling Nick, I was going to ask you, who, who's behind all this racial division in this country, you know? I, you know, I got my little YouTube Satan. channel, and I, I look up news stories. Yeah. And uh, I report, I report on them. I always leave links in the description so they can see on that line. Right. But who was actually who was actually behind all this? Like I did a story yesterday. They say that white people are the reason why black people do not hike and jog. And the example they used, the New York Times used was about the joggers was Ahmad Omri or whatever his name is down yeah. in Georgia. Blah 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 Here blah blah blah. <laughs> yeah, blah blah blah. Here he was out jogging. And um, got attacked by white people. The man wasn't jogging; he was wearing boots. I don't know. know. He might have been jogging. I don't. It might be fake news that he was wearing boots because it just looked like boots. But he he was not jogging. You're right. He was attacking the the man with the gun. You don't attack a man with a gun and expect not to get shot. Well, anyway. take look look at this, Hank. He was not in a neighborhood he was familiar with. He knew nobody there. He was miles away from where he, where he's from, you know. He's coming out of a house that's being uh, newly constructed. Yeah. You know, he don't know nobody there. People what, suspicious he that, that he's morning? a thief, and he's yeah. allegedly thieved before, tried to steal a TV out of a Walmart or a Kmart or something, according to police arrest video. that They didn't end up arresting him, I guess. He's bad kids. What a mess! But 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 every new news story that I've been reading is uh, the blacks complaining, or either the homosexuals are complaining about the white man. Right. You know, the, the homosexuals don't complain about the black man or the Asian man; they complain about the white man. There's so much hatred towards the white man, and I ain't done nothing to any of them. I ain't done a single thing to any of them. Yep. You know, bitterness. They want to group us all. They want to group us all together, and they we don't need no Ku Klux Klan, James. Yeah, we don't need no claims that the, the blacks are doing a good enough job of their own killing each other and shooting each other, up, running over each other. We don't need no Ku Klux Klan. Ku I'm Ku not Klux convinced Klan the Klan were, were really doing that stuff that they're accused of doing. They claim, oh, because of the lynchings, there were lynchings, but the Klan didn't carry out the all those lynchings. I think that we're not the being Ku told Klan. the truth about all that stuff. It's just a the Ku Klux cartoon Klan. enemy. The Ku Klux Klan. The Ku Klux Klan sits at home on Saturday and Sunday and watch football right. and drink cold beer. They don't have to do nothing. They're doing it all all good enough on their own, man. We don't, yeah. You know, this racial division. And I live in the ghetto, Hake. I live right down here, slap in the middle of the ghetto. And I'm around blacks all the time. And I get along good with them. You know, there's, there's, there's certain areas you don't want to go around because it's just pure hatred and meanness. Right. But even towards your own people, it's just a meanness. Inherent in them. They're not mean just against whites, but they're mean against each other, you know? It's but not, in, I don't part, think it's inherent necessarily. It's just the evil that they descend into because it's just a vicious part, circle that never ends. For the, most, for the most part, the blacks down here are just fine. Right. You know, there's, there's no risk. You don't, you know, the only thing I see is in the news and in these stories. But in real life, I don't see it at all. Yeah. You know, I really don't see all this racial division it talks about. Well, be and, careful and, out there. And Joe Biden, and Joe Biden said that uh, white supremacy is the number one worst thing in America. My yeah. God. I know. You Ridiculous. Know? Just, it's like just they're lying. Trying to, they're trying to. Just propaganda. The, news, the, the media and the government. Are trying to pit us against each other. Yeah, you know, I don't think we really we really don't have a problem with each other if if we would just quit listening to all this bull crap. Skip, I gotta say, run, man. It's it's great to hear all from right. you. All right, you take care, James. You as well, man. All right. Uh, all right, man. Joe in Oregon has a question. What's up, Joe? Appreciate you hanging in there. Go for it. Hey, hey, how you doing? Doing well, man. 
Um, so I just wanted to comment on a previous caller. I think his name was John, maybe. John from Kentucky. Um, what did he say yeah, that you're think, commenting on? So I believe he was the one saying that white people dominate our culture. Um, you know, something to that effect. Um, I just wanted to say, well, nothing is stopping black people from creating their own uh, institutions and movies, TV shows, et cetera, et cetera. In fact, they have. They've been doing that for years, and that's all fine. No, nobody has a problem with that. Right. So I don't. I, I think this this uh, lie that white people are dominating the culture and that we're not letting black people in or letting them have their you know their say or whatever is it's just false. It's just a false narrative. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it is. It's, wanna... it's just a it's just a smear the whites who who don't actually have the political and media power in this country. It's just a smear the white yeah. Christians. Absolutely. Scapegoating. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Interesting, I man. Mean, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know what, you know, world he's been living in for the last, you know, 40 years or 50 years he or whatever. He thinks it's but... oppression. <laughs> oppression yeah, to grow up yeah. loving Jesus. White Jesus, yeah. white Jesus in his words. What a mess. Yeah. I mean, start your own church and make it a black Jesus. Well, he already, he already did, and he's suffering for it. And thinking yeah. and preemptively bragging about ruling over the slave whites that will be in heaven, in his mind. What a mess. Right. Yeah. Not so, good. Not living in reality. That. Yeah, the black Israelites are basically a dumpster fire. Yeah. What a shame. Yeah. Yeah. I've seen them out on the street, and they're just preaching so much hate. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's horrible. And the media, here's another thing about them. Why does the media ignore them? Like, if, if yeah. they were white people... Covington you know, Catholic they, boys, they ignored them. Exactly. Yeah. They completely ignored them. They were standing there saying all kinds of hateful things. Yep. Like, slurs and everything. And the media completely ignored them. Because you they're... Know, it's, because they're already, they've already marginalized themselves, and they, the, the blacks aren't able to be used for a power grab. The whites, you smear the whites, and mm-hmm. you get political power out of that. You get uh, sympathy from the blind, brainwashed masses who are, bra- who are conditioned to hate and be suspicious of white people. So yep. there's, no, there's no power and money to be gained from going after the Israelites. Although, you know, some of the, some of the hate-filled ADL and SPLC people, they give lip service to, oh yeah, there's some black nationalists who are evil. But they smear them for b- opposing same-sex marriage and for opposing right. the liberal Jewish people. They don't smear them for hating normal Christian white people and not being uh, true Christians unto themselves. It's just a uh, no because it's perfectly acceptable to yeah. hate whites and to hate Christians. That's, yep. that's liberals love doing that. Yeah. Anyway, great so. points, Joe. I appreciate it, man. Sure. Good Ta- talking with you, Hake. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye. Guys, we are at the end of the show. Rick in Hampton, Virginia. Man, you got to call in earlier, man. He wanted to talk about the Virginia race and comment on John from Kentucky. And William in California, man, I wanted to get to you. Uh, he wanted to talk about the Virginia governor's race and more. Bible go-to guy suggests that Skip, who gets along with the blacks, maybe he never talks politics or religion with the blacks, then he'd find out real quick what they really think of him. I don't know. Have you disagreed with the, have you disagreed with the blacks to their faces, Skip? He, he seems to be pretty free-speaking with regard to politics and stuff. I wonder if that's true. 96% of blacks give uh, vote Democrat, give or take vote Democrat. Black conservatives have hardly made a dent in black people's hearts. Few are there who are fine. And even the black con- so-called conservatives, they still hate whites. So anyway, guys, uh, let's just do a uh, regular one of your, one of your excellent selections Chris, for this closing music. We're over time. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you for bearing with me through the the mess. <laughs> the mess today. But thanks, guys, and take care.